I'd like to draw your attention to figure five, which shows the Kepler-90 planets in order on top and our solar system planets on bottom. Here, the sizes of the planets are to scale, but the distances between the planets are not. The new planet so star, Kepler-90, is a G0 type star that is a little bit hotter, larger, and more massive than the sun, and which lies about 2,500 light years away in the northern sky. Before this work, we already knew that Kepler-90 hosted seven planets. We knew of two planets a bit larger than the Earth orbiting close to their star, three planets a bit smaller than Neptune orbiting further out, and two outer planets about the size of Saturn and Jupiter. The new planet we found, Kepler-90i, is the smallest of the bunch and orbits just outside the inner two planets. The new planet is small enough that we think it is probably rocky and doesn't have a thick atmosphere like the gas giant planets farther out in the Kepler-90 system. Kepler-90i is not a place I'd like to go visit, though. The surface is likely scorching hot. We calculated that it probably has an average temperature of about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Still looking at figure five, I want to point out that like our solar system, the planets around Kepler-90 seem to follow a pattern and that the smaller planets are found close to their star and the bigger planets are found further away. In our own solar system, this pattern is often seen as evidence that the outer planets formed in a cooler part of the solar system where water ice can stay solid and clump together to make bigger and bigger planets. The pattern we see around Kepler-90 could be evidence of that same process happening in this other system as well. Now I'd like to direct your attention to figure six, which shows the orbits of the Kepler-90 planets to scale on the left alongside the orbits of the solar system planets on the right. The inner two small planets, Kepler 90 b and c, orbit their star every seven and nine days. Just outside, the new planet, Kepler 90 i, orbits the star every 14 days. The three sub-Neptune-sized planets, Kepler 90 d, e, and f, orbit their star every 60, 92, and 125 days. And the two gas giant planets, Kepler 90 G and H orbit every 211 days and every 332 days. As you can see in figure six, an interesting fact about the Kepler 90 system is that all the planets are found scrunched very close to their star. All eight of the planets around Kepler 90 orbit closer to their hosts than Earth orbits the sun. This could hint that the eight planets around Kepler 90 may have formed more spread out like the planets in our own solar system and then somehow migrated to the orbits we see them in today. The next slide, figure seven, is just a zoomed out version of the image we were just looking at. Again, I'm showing the Kepler-90 system to scale on the left alongside the solar system planets on the right. The solar system has four planets relatively close to the sun and four farther out, while Kepler-90 has all eight planets close in. That may not be the whole story though. It's very possible that Kepler-90 has even more planets that we just wouldn't know about. On the left-hand side of the graphic, I've highlighted orange and blue regions in the Kepler-90 system. Kepler-90 has searched for planets around, or Kepler has searched for planets around Kepler-90 only in the small orange highlighted region in the center. The large blue highlighted region is largely unexplored. If planets in that area do exist, they probably would not have transited enough times while Kepler was watching for us to know that they were there. There's a lot of unexplored real estate in the Kepler-90 system, and it would almost be surprising to me if there weren't any more planets around this star. In figure eight, I'm showing the number of all known confirmed planetary systems with one planet, two planets, three planets, etc. Each dot represents one known planetary system. We know of many single planet systems shown at the bottom of this diagram, and progressively fewer systems as we increase the number of planets, all the way up to Kepler-90 at the top of the diagram, the only known eight-planet system outside of our own. Kepler-90 is the first exoplanet system with eight planets, but almost certainly will not be the last. I suspect that many of these other systems have more undiscovered planets which we just haven't seen that. When I think about this, I start to wonder, is an eight-planet system like our own solar system really that extraordinary? For the first time since our solar system planets were discovered thousands of years ago, we know for sure that the solar system is not the sole record holder for the most planets, and we've just scratched the surface. Maybe there are systems out there with so many planets that they make our eight-planet solar system seem ordinary.